In the previous lesson, I created a document that is 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall, which now resides inside of the Rebel interface. As I mentioned earlier, this can be a canvas that you can paint on, or it can be a piece of paper that you draw on. It's really up to you. It doesn't have to be either of those things. It's simply the document that you're working on. You can imagine that Rebel's user interface is like your desk. You have some of your tools on either side, just like you would if you were working with traditional media. You can grab your paper and move it around your desk. You can also rotate the angle of your paper or canvas. And because you are working digitally, you can even zoom into your composition to look at it more closely, or you can zoom out to look at it from a distance. If your tablet supports multi-touch, that will make navigation feel much more intuitive. I'm using a display tablet that supports touch, so I can easily manipulate my canvas with my fingers. But you can do all of this navigation without a touch screen as well. Just like your desk, Rebel's user interface is able to be customized. If I don't like my color selection panel to be here, I can simply drag it to the other side of my screen. I can rearrange many of the items in the Rebel interface to suit my workflow. I can even make the panels larger or smaller. Before we arrange the workspace, it could be helpful to choose a scaling size for the interface. You can find this setting under Edit Preferences. This can make everything you see larger or smaller, including the text and icons. Try to find the balance between the interface being easily visible to you while conserving space for your canvas. While we are inside the preferences, let's also choose to open floating panels in the main window. This will ensure that if you're using multiple displays, your panels will always open on the display that has your canvas on it. If you prefer to have your panels open on other displays, feel free to skip this. Next, I want to modify the panels a bit by dragging on the top title bar to undock the tool properties and the brushes. If too many panels are stacked atop one another, they will flow off of the screen and you won't be able to access the contents. Next, I'll show a hidden panel that will be useful. From the window menu, I'll activate visual settings. I also want to make sure I can easily see the color and layers panels at all times. The navigator is also important, but it can be collapsed to save space until we need it. After placing all of these panels on screen, try to optimize their height and width to best suit your display. Avoid cutting off any content in the panels, and do not cover too much of your canvas. After going through all of this effort, I'd hate for you to have to do it again. So let's go to the window menu and export this layout to back it up. You'll be able to import the layout to set it up this way again if it ever gets reset to default. Next, we'll take a look at some of the basics of navigating the user interface. In order to ensure the canvas is centered and visible on the screen, click in the navigator on Fit to Screen. Should the canvas become angled, there's a button here to reset the rotation as well. Using a pen or a mouse, you can hover over many of the buttons in Rebel to see a tooltip that indicates what each feature is. You'll notice that once I click on a button, it is highlighted in blue. This is how you can tell if a tool, brush, feature, or setting is active or not. Now let's try making some marks on the canvas to ensure that our tablet is working. If you're using a mouse, feel free to skip past this part. The toolbox has all of the tools that you'll be using here in Rebel, and each tool can perform a variety of functions. For example, we can select any of the brush tools, which tells Rebel that we are ready to paint. If a brush tool is not selected, we will not be able to paint on our canvas. Next, let's make sure we have a visible color selected for painting. It's hard to see what you're doing if you're using white paint on a white canvas, so let's choose dark blue for now. This way, we can easily see the strokes we're making as we paint. To choose a color, click on the ring in the color picker to select a hue, and then within the square in the center, drag the cursor to choose the exact shade and intensity you want. We're going to go more in depth into the color picker later. You may have already selected a brush, so to make sure we're all working with the same brush, let's go to the toolbar in the top left and choose the oils acrylics category. I'll choose the round soft brush, and if I paint a test stroke using firm pressure, I get a fairly simple stroke shape with paint that is flat and opaque. If you're using a drawing tablet, you can control the thickness of your lines by adjusting the amount of pressure you apply. For example, light pressure will create thin lines, while heavier pressure will result in thicker lines. It's worth noting that a mouse doesn't have this capability and can't replicate this effect. If you're having trouble getting your pen to make a mark on the canvas, you may want to go to the Edit Menu Preferences and look under Tablet. Here you can choose between a Wacom-compatible device that uses WinTab 
or other types of devices. It could be that the wrong option is selected here. Restart Rebel for the changes to take effect. If that does not help, I have a troubleshooting video you can watch with more solutions. Now that we've made a mess on our canvas, let's learn how to quickly clear everything off. Of course, you can use your eraser, but there's a faster way to do it. Simply press Delete to clear the contents of the currently selected layer. If you only have one layer, you can also delete the layer and a fresh one will be created. If you look under Edit Preferences, there is also an option to enable a Clear Layer button in the Layers panel that looks like a box with an X inside of it. By clicking on this button, you can clear the layer. Now that we are able to paint on our canvas, let's go more in-depth into the navigation tools. We'll start with panning the canvas or moving the canvas around your workspace. You can do that a number of different ways. The first is to use the navigator panel. You may need to expand it vertically. When you click and hold with your mouse or tap and hold with your pen on the thumbnail of your canvas, you can drag to reposition it. Another way to pan is to hold the right mouse button down. You may have right mouse set to a button on your pen as well. If so, you may want to disable this in the tablet properties if it's interfering with you while you work. My preferred way to pan is to hold down the space bar on a keyboard. That will toggle your cursor to the pan mode, allowing you to move the canvas. Releasing spacebar returns you to whatever tool was previously selected. If you're using a touch-capable device, you can also press down with two fingers and drag your canvas to pan it around. Try to avoid twisting or rotating your fingers because it will rotate your canvas. If that happens and your canvas is askew, you can click in the navigator to return the canvas to its upright position. There are also options under Edit Preferences Tablet to customize touch recognition if you don't want it to affect the rotation of the canvas. Multi-touch can be temporarily disabled using a switch or a button on your tablet, or you can permanently disable it in the preferences. Next, let's take a look at zooming in and out of the canvas. We can do that in a number of different ways. First, I can do it with the buttons and sliders in the navigator. Another way to do it is to hold Z on your keyboard and click or tap and drag left or right on the canvas. This will let you focus on a target area. This method and the sliders in the navigator utilize Scrubby Zoom, which lets you zoom in and out very fluidly. The other modes zoom to specific increments. Another way to zoom in increments is to use the keyboard shortcuts of Control Plus and Control Minus. You're not limited to navigating with your keyboard. You can also use the express keys on your tablet to invoke these tools and commands. I'll explain how to use express keys later in this lesson. We can also zoom using touch gestures by spreading two fingers apart to zoom in or bringing two fingers closer together to zoom out. There are also options in the navigator to fit the image on the screen and zoom the canvas to 100%. 100% means the canvas is not zoomed in or zoomed out. If you want to set a zoom level numerically, you can do that. For example, you could have the canvas zoomed in to exactly 33%. And after zooming in, you can drag the box over the thumbnail to focus on specific areas of your painting. While we're on the topic of zooming, if nanopixel mode is enabled, it may cause Rebel to crash or act slowly, particularly on slower computers. You can disable it from the visual settings panel. To rotate the canvas, you can use the navigator or the shortcuts. Hold R, then drag to rotate the canvas around a central axis. Likewise, you can also press Ctrl-Alt-Right or Ctrl-Alt-Left to rotate in increments. You can also manually set the rotation angle from the navigator. For example, you could rotate the canvas 45 degrees. You can use Touch to rotate the canvas by twisting two fingers. To reset the rotation, click on the Reset Rotation button. Once you have mastered these navigation tools, it's quite easy to manipulate your view of the canvas. If you have a drawing tablet, it may come with express keys. These are buttons that are built into the device and can be customized to perform keyboard shortcuts and execute commands within Rebel. They can be a useful tool for streamlining your workflow and saving time. I'm using the Cintiq 27 QHD Touch, which comes with the Wacom Express Key Remote. If I open the Wacom Tablet Properties, I can click on the Express Key Remote or whichever device that I want to configure, then look for the touch ring for this particular device. Here's where I can choose what the touch ring is going to do. It's very important that you make note of which application that you're assigning commands to. By default, All Other is selected, which is a global setting for all applications. That global setting can be overridden by adding specific applications. Once you choose a specific application, 
you can have different shortcuts for each individual application. To add an application, click on the plus button. I'll choose the Rebel application so that the functions I program will apply only to Rebel. Then I'll click on Rebel to activate it. I'll set the first touch ring mode to auto scroll zoom. You may also need to adjust the sensitivity of the touch ring. Next, I'm going to go to the Express Keys tab and program the very first button on my Express Key remote to a keyboard keystroke. If necessary, I'll press the Clear button, then Space Bar to enter that as the new keystroke. I'll name it Pan and apply it. Now if I minimize my Wacom tablet properties and go back to Rebel, I can use my Express Key remote to activate commands while I'm painting without having to touch the keyboard or hunt around in menus. I'll paint a few strokes and then press the key that I set to spacebar to pan my canvas. Next I'll use the touch ring to select the correct mode and then rotate around the wheel to zoom. Again, I can make this more or less sensitive. Your pen may also have buttons that you can assign shortcuts to. These buttons are usually located near the tip of the pen. Typically pens have one, two, or three buttons. To give you an example, you could program one of these buttons to act as the eraser, allowing you to erase by holding down the pen button. It will take some time and experimentation to determine which tools and commands you use frequently enough to justify assigning them to an express key. Don't worry if it takes you a while to find the right combination of shortcuts that works best for you. Next, I want to discuss some of the panels that are floating here in our interface. We can have individual panels floating on our screen like this, or we can have these panels grouped together in different ways. Panels can be collapsed so that they take up less space on screen, or they can be opened when it's time to access the contents within. You can drag panels around and reposition them by dragging from the top bar of the palette. If the panel has an X and you click on it, you'll close the palette. You can restore panels from the window menu. I'll restore the visual settings. You can navigate between the different panels that are grouped together by clicking on the tab. Many panels also have an Options button that may customize the panel contents. You can even close panels without an X from this menu. Panels can be docked together on the sides of the UI, but not when they are free-floating. With an option in the Preferences, you can even dock panels on the top and bottom of the UI. To resize panels and reveal more or less of their contents, drag from the sides or corners of the panel. Some panels have content that will scale in relation to the panel. The color picker is one such example. Panels can even be locked if you're concerned about accidentally moving the panels while you're drawing. Simply look under the window menu and click on Lock Panels, then you won't be able to accidentally move or rearrange any of the panels. You can unlock the panels again from the window menu. I'm using a fairly large display, which allows me to keep a wide view of my canvas while still having room for multiple panels. Your workflow may require even more panels, in which case it can be helpful to hide the interface so you only see the canvas. You can do this by pressing Tab on your keyboard. This removes a lot of the distractions and allows you to focus on your painting. If you want the panels to return, press Tab again. It's easy enough to press Tab on your keyboard, but you could also set an Express key to show and hide the UI. You can even show select panels in this mode by pressing their keyboard shortcut, which can be found in the window menu. For example, I'll press F12 to show the visual settings panel. When I'm done with a panel, I can hide it by pressing the shortcut again. There are also preferences you can choose for this mode, which determine where these panels will appear, such as under your cursor or in the center of the display. You can even choose whether or not to show one panel at a time. Don't worry if you don't yet know which setting you prefer. You can always come back to these preferences later. If you want to squeeze a tiny bit more room out of Rebel's UI, you can enter full screen mode from the view menu, and that will hide the application bar near the top of the screen. This can be useful if you're concerned about accidentally closing the application or moving the window. To exit full screen mode, you'll have to click on it again in the view menu. Or you can use a custom keyboard shortcut to make it easier to invoke. 